Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Fresh cup of coffee. Get some coffee, everybody, everybody, everybody. Calm down. Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome. This is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and get ready for a powerful broadcast today. It has begun. The cup of trembling is definitely begun. The Friday prayers are over. It's day three of the three days of rage, which I'm afraid is going to go a little longer than three days. Jerusalem is up in smoke. Fires are raging. Tear gas is being fired. Rubber bullets are being shot. Unfortunately, one Palestinian has been killed. 60 people have been wounded as the chaos is really just now getting started. And it's not just only in Jerusalem. 14 rockets have been fired out of Gaza and there is rubber bullets and tear gas in the streets of Bethlehem. It is the beginning of a very powerful prophetic chapter in the Bible in Zechariah chapter 12, the cup of trembling. And so welcome today. We're going to have a powerful prophetic broadcast for you again today. Matter of fact, uh, this is the day the Lord has made. He said, let's rejoice and be glad therein. And yes, there will be people who will be second guessing the president's decision to declare Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But there's really, it's not his decision. It, the decision was made in 1995. The U.S. Congress voted it, voted to make Jerusalem the capital and to move the U.S. Embassy. And even Bill Clinton signed it into law. But every president, including Clinton, has delayed it six months per each time until Donald Trump finally has declared Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and the U.S. Embassy is going to be moving and they're going to build a brand new one is what they're going to do. Now, having said that, I want to welcome all of you to the broadcast. We don't know what could happen in the next two hours. Uh, we have all kinds of wildfires and earthquakes and things taking place, asteroids, meteorites, everything. And you, you name it, it's happening. But let's go to the word of the Lord. Brock Begley's here. He's producing today's broadcast. Let's go to the word of the Lord. We're going to go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 12. Let me uh, reposition my, uh, all of my uh, technology here. And we're going to go to Zechariah's. And we've got a bad camera here. Do we have a bad camera? All right, he'll adjust that. And uh, we're going to go to Zechariah chapter 12 and read. Um, there's no question about that. We're going to read from the King James Version of the Bible. We'll bring Max in to read. This is a powerful chapter. You're literally living now, folks, in the biblical narrative. You're living in the biblical scriptures. It is unbelievable what is taking place. All right. So let me uh, go now to... Uh, Max, Zechariah chapter 12, the cup of trembling has become Jerusalem. Zechariah 12. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah 
like an hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath. And they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You know, here's a, here's a verse that just popped out at me, and I've read this a million times, but he says that, uh, verse 6, In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath, and they shall devour all the people round about, all that are on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Inhabited again in her own place. In other words, known for her real name, known for who she really is. And of course, that would be, she's the capital of Israel. This is quite an extraordinary verse here. And of course, all of it, the cup of trembling, the burdensome stone, that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling. And we're going to show you footage and pictures and things going on right now. It's going to blow your mind. It has become this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone that he says in verse 2 and 3. And everyone that would come against it would be cut in pieces. So I'm just highlighting those. I mean, I had them underlined, but I think that um, we're living in this time now. Max? Let the glory of the house of David... And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. What? And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. Praise God. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. As the mourning of Hadad Rimon in the valley of Megiddon, and the land shall mourn, every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Powerful, powerful scripture here. Again, the trump, it's telling us right here in the scripture that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone for all people. And everyone that would burden themselves with it shall be broken in pieces. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very sad what's happening here. You don't want to see this violence. We don't need this violence. But, uh, and Mike Pence is scheduled to go to Jerusalem here very soon. You heard the president say that when he announced that Jerusalem was now the capital of Israel. He said, I'm sending Mike Pence over there and let him meet with the Palestinians and try to calm the waters. But already some of the Palestinian leaders are saying, don't send Mike Pence over here. He is not welcome. Yet we understand that uh, President of the Palestinian Authority, Abbas, is saying, no, he can come. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about here. And so he'll be going to Bethlehem. He'll be going to the West Bank uh, to meet President Abbas unless he has to cancel it. So there you see Mike Pence will be meeting President Maud Abbas uh, very shortly. That meeting is going to take place in the West Bank in uh, Bethlehem. Uh, unbelievable that we're talking about these types of meetings with these individuals involved uh, at this level, but that's exactly where we're at. We're living in the last days. We're living in the apocalyptic hour. And so, uh, folks, I'm just serious. It's something biblical is definitely going on. Let me say this quickly here. We got, uh, oh, I wish this, Heidi, I cannot remember. These uh, a wonderful f couple from Idaho sent us these, uh, Jesus, the best gift ever. You know what? And I don't have my note here. 
So I, the, I want to thank these brother and sister from Idaho for sending us. Uh, Jesus is the best gift ever. There's no doubt about that. Here's another one. Oh, come let us adore him. Another wonderful cup coming in the mail. Thank you, guys. Some of your, uh, your, your gifts and, and cards have been coming in. We just want to thank you guys so much. And at, since we went to Idaho, we just want to say, Idaho, what a wonderful state. What a beautiful state Idaho is. Uh, it's just amazing um, how the mountains. And, of course, the whole uh, conference we had there in Boise, Idaho, was just a great conference. Um, we baptized, I can't remember how many people now off the top of my head. It seemed like it was 30 some, but I cannot remember. And, um, and then also the solar eclipse, uh, that we've seen was just tremendous. A great conference in Idaho, Boise, Idaho this, this year was a lot of fun. A lot of wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ we met there. Just incredible guys. The earth is shaking and quaking. The devil's back is breaking. In just the last few hours, there has been three mega earthquakes. 6.7 Micronesia, 6.2 New Zealand, 6.4 Micronesia. Matter of fact, let's stop and just take a look at the earthquake map right now. Here's what's going on. There has been 36 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. And uh, it is shaking big time, and maybe because it's just prophetically the time we're in. But 4.7 earthquake in Argentina, 3.5 earthquake in Finland, 4.5 in Poland. I mean, I've never seen a 4.5 earthquake. Poland, 4.5, then 4.7 Argentina. And then 3.5 Finland, but also 5.1 earthquake in Fiji, 5.3 earthquake in Tonga, 5.0 in the Kuril Islands, all shaken everywhere. Uh, 2.5, the geysers in California. And then boom, there it is. Boom. That mega quake. It was 6.7, very shallow has been downsized to 6.5 right there, Micronesia. Now, I want to wanna keep this focus here for you. Alaska was a 2.8, Micronesia right there. Then we had a 4.1 in Iraq, and then boom, look how close. Boom, right there in uh, New Zealand. So you went from New Zealand to Micronesia right in this area. Quakes keep happening, big ones, okay? That one's 6.2 in New Zealand. Then back to Micronesia, boom, 4.7. Then it went to China, 4.9, okay? 4.9 over in China. Then 4.9 hit Japan as the earth is just shaking and quaking over there. 2.6 Hawaii, 4.4 earthquake, then hit Chile. 4.5 hit Greece. What? And then we had a 5.5, a very strong uh, aftershock, again in Micronesia. 2.7 Oklahoma, 4.3 Chile, 3.2 Puerto Rico, 4.2 Iran, 3.1 California, 3.0 Alaska, 4.0 Chile. And then here it comes again, another mega quake, 6.4 right there, Micronesia followed by a aftershock in Micronesia. And then a 4.7, look how close it's staying over there in the Philippines. And then, um, and then Cascadia, that's right, up there near Seattle, up in uh, Allen, Washington, we had a 2.5 earthquake way up there along that Cascadia fault line. And then once again, 4.9, Micronesia again, 4.9, Fiji staying over in that area, then a 4.2 second quake in Iran, and then a 3.0 back in Alaska, and then 4.5 are coming right back to that same area again in the uh, southeast in, in South Asia, in Indonesia, 4.4 Argentina, 3.7 
California. There's been 36 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. The earth continues to shake and quake, folks. It continues to shake and quake. While that's going on, we check with the, uh, the uh, reports on the solar winds and that brand new solar, what's called a sunspot that opened up up there. The winds are, are right now blowing at 417 kilometers per second. And, um, and there's been a brand new sunspot that opened up on the sun. And uh, so that's, that's going to create more potential for CMEs or solar flares creating CMEs. But while that's going on, we also realize that we've had eight fireballs, but one of them was over New Jersey. What? New Jersey? Yes, an incredible, uh, incredible fireball over New Jersey last night at 3.09 a.m. this morning. A police officer, a state trooper driving down the road. There it is. Boom! Right in front of him on his dash cam captured this enormous fireball as it was uh, breaking through the Earth's atmosphere right over New Jersey. There was only eight fireballs that broke through the Earth's atmosphere, and that was one of them. It was over New Jersey, creating quite a stir for those that saw it. It's a, an incredible uh, thing to witness, and it took place last night, uh, the, the fireballs. And asteroids, we don't have any asteroids that are going to break through are going to hit us today. None of them are on the screen. Don't worry about it. Or, or, or wait a minute, wait a minute. So the U.S. Geological, I mean, uh, when space weather, when NASA tells us don't worry, then we shouldn't worry, right? I mean, today's December 8th. I'll take you to the uh, asteroid chart. Uh, you can take a look at it here. And uh, right there, December, uh, there was no asteroids for December 7th or December 8th. But tomorrow we are going to have an asteroid. It's, it's called 2017 WV12, and it will come within 3.4 lunar distance of the Earth, okay? Which is no problem. That's about 800,000 miles away, but it's still that, NASA would say, that's still a near-Earth object, only 800,000 miles. I mean, you're talking space, that's getting close. But here's what I can't understand. Here's what I'm, I'm, I'm stunned over. Uh, on November the 9th, there was an asteroid that skimmed by, scraped by, I mean, whizzed by, I mean, just, wow, are you serious? It come within 73,000 miles of the earth. This thing was insanely close. 73,000, the moon is 240,000 miles away. This came, this came within 73,000. Here's the story. Here's the story, though. It was not on the chart. NASA never told us it was coming. NASA don't even deny that they didn't know or, or, that, or that nothing. They just didn't tell us. See, that's what I'm saying. So you look at your chart today. It says there's no asteroids in the weather forecast in space today. No worries. Akuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Akuna Matata. Ain't no asteroids this day. But wait a minute. Are you sure? Because we just had a rock big enough to bring a biblical, catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic conclusion. This thing was big enough to create the Revelation chapter 8 catastrophic event and we were not told that it was even going to go by no clue uh here's the uh report on that i'm gonna uh, folks this thing was that close asteroid asteroid and so this is why we have to keep a close eye and watch what's going on even if they don't tell us i always say this is what i'm saying to you you don't know the day nor the hour Folks, you don't know the day or the hour the Lord's coming, and you don't know the day or the hour that the first of two deep, deep, deep impacts is coming. But the asteroid that could have obliterated New York City skimmed past the Earth, and NASA 
didn't notice. Well, or did they? Well, this large space rock even was given a name. Asteroid 2017 VL2 passed the planet on November 9th at an astonishing distance of only 73,000 miles, which is considered unbelievably close. Uh, space uh, reports say that if the rock measuring between 16 and 32 meters, if it had hit, it would have wiped out a major city as big as New York City off the map. The rock belongs to the Apollo group of asteroids that was first seen Folks, you might say, why am I bringing this up? It just now got put in the news. We just now found out about this. This is, this is December the 8th. This rock went by on November 9th. NASA didn't tell us it was coming. And then NASA didn't tell us it went by for a month. They waited till Jerusalem become a cup of trembling. They waited till California was enraged and flamed in fire. They waited till Al Frankenstein resigned from the Senate. They waited till Matt Lauer was accused of sexual. They, 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 they've waited until the Macy Day parade was over. They have waited until everybody forgot that there was an asteroid and then they slipped it in at the last second. But whoa, 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 whoa. This large space rock called 2017 VL2, passed the planet on November 9th. Astonishing di distance of only 73,000 miles. And the rock, of course, belonged to that Apollo group of asteroids, which were seen at the Atlas MLO Observatory in Hawaii a day later. It was traveling at the speed of 8.73 kilometers per second and it would have caused a catastrophic damage if it had made impact. So they're telling us is they did not see it coming. They didn't see it. They didn't know it was there until it was whizzing by and the Hawaii Observatory captured it. So let's not beat NASA up because they're admitting they didn't see it. And this is my whole point. NASA can't see them all. They give you these charts. They tell you what's coming. But folks, they can't catch them all. We're in a galactical plane. So when you read Revelation, everybody thinks that that deep impact in Revelation 8, the first one, the second one, this rock here, if it would have hit us, nobody would have seen it coming. It would have crashed into the earth. If it would have hit the ocean, it would have created a thousand foot tsunami which have wiped out who knows how many millions of people. We don't even know. Depends what part of the earth it hit. If it hit land, it would have just obliviated. If it had been near a city, it would have wiped, killed everybody in the city, whether it was Calcutta, India, Moscow, Russia, New York City, you know, Sydney, Australia, just where, you know, Paris, France, just wherever it happened to hit, it's over. This would have been a catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic, biblical mo moment and, 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 a, and a catastrophe of biblical proportions. And NASA is admitting they didn't see it. But here's the thing. This is why I want to say they caught it as it was going by, they say. But they didn't tell you for a month. Because if they would have told you the next day that an asteroid they didn't know was coming just barely missed us and we just caught it on its way past, people would have been free. People's hair would have been on fire on why, what's going on. We spend all this money. We got the International Space Station. We got all these satellites up there. We got observatories everywhere. And we can't, we can't see an asteroid when it's upon us. So this is very important, folks, that I'm, well, I'm trying to tell you, don't put your faith in man and man's technologies because our ways are not the ways of God. His ways are so much higher than our ways than the heavens are the earth. Matter of fact, this asteroid flown past the earth. Now they know, now that they know about it, they've calculated it, the speed, its trajectory, where it's going, and they know it's coming back again in the year 2020, excuse me, in the year 2125. It's going to be 108 years. I don't, I'm not going to be here. I, I don't, I doubt any of us are. 
I'm not God. I don't know for sure, but I would say that none of us will be here unless it could be during the millennial reign of which I'm sure it won't hit us then. But don't forget, NASA did reveal that we have a space rock um, the size of a mountain that is coming to the earth. It's going to go by the earth, hopefully in the year 2029 called Apophis. But it will come back again in the year 2036 and all bets are off. Now, if you read, they, they tell you it's the size of a mountain. If you go to Revelation chapter 8, just for a moment, I'll read just a couple verses. Um, but this is what it says about the asteroids or meteorites that are coming. In Revelation 8.8, 8, it says, And the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And a third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. So we're going to have a mountain deep impact. It's going to happen. And will it happen in the year 2029? Or will it happen in the year 2036? Well, if we're still here... NASA's giving us a heads up. They're even telling you it's the size of a mountain. They're even partially giving you a biblical clue that Apophis is on the way. Matter of fact, that's why when I wrote my book, Mark of the Beast, RFID, I included about Apophis into the storyline because I, it's just that significant. Who knows how that's going to play out, but that's where we're at. Um... But even when NASA first discovered Apophis back in 2014, Apophis had a record-breaking collision risk of four on the Torino scale. So this isn't something to mess with. This is, uh, we are living in this time. The uh, Steve Chelsea, a NASA scientist with, um, check this out. There it is. Uh, don't forget. I'm not forgetting. Brock says, Paul, don't. Dad, 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 don't forget. We got another asteroid coming on December 17th. On, two seven, on 12, 17, 17, asteroid 3200, Phaethon, uh will skim by the Earth. And so he said, just remember that. Don't forget that thing. It's going to come within 6 million miles. It's really not, not even... I mean, this, we're talking 73,000 miles here. We're talking 73,000 miles. Just barely missed us. But get this. NASA says, a guy by the name of Steve Chelsea, a NASA scientist, along with Paul Kodas from the Space Agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, have predicted a collision will occur on April the 13th 2036. They're predicting it. So I'm telling you, Apophis is going to go by in the year 2029. Skimming by as big as a mountain. They say we will be able to physically see it as it goes by. But then it comes back seven years later in the year on April the 13th, 2036. And Steve Chelsea of NASA and Paul CODIS of NASA both are predicting the collision will occur on April 13, 2036. Apophis has been one of those celestial bodies that has captured the public's interest since it was originally discovered in 2004, but then the update about it in 2014 of its potential deep, deep impact. Will that be the day, April 13, 2036? Is that the day? that Revelation 8.8 8 first happens. And if it is, you just saw what the Bible said will be the impact of that. But do you realize a second one comes in right behind it? Now, we don't know how much time there is between these two, but look at verse 10. It's, I'm in Revelation chapter 8, verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. So this, I believe, is a, is a comet, okay? Uh, or maybe it is planet X 
the uh, fragments from planet X or something like that because it's called a star burning like a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood and the third part of the waters became Wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were bitter or poisonous or Wormwood. Now you might say, okay, so that's the second deep impact. But to prove to you that there's something here, of course, I, I talked about it last night, if you were watching the show, how that, uh, um, you know, Planet X was discovered. The Washington Post did this big, huge article on December the 11th, 2015, that scientists in Chile, in that observatory in the mountains of Chile, spotted two, two, you heard me, two huge objects on the edge of the solar system. And they believed that they were planet X or that one of them could be called planet X. Okay. Now that, that, that's, you can read the article. It's Google it. It's on the, on the uh, Washington post. And I read it last night just to remind people. But then since then, NASA said, no, 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 no. We don't want to talk about it again. Um, matter of fact, David Morrison, the lead chief scientist of NASA, told us in a video he did, I watched it last night before I went on the air, he told us in 2012, in the summer of 2012, he said, quit asking me about Planet X and Nibiru and, and, uh, and all of that. He said, uh, there's no, you know, it's, we'd be seeing it by now. It, it's not going to happen. This is 2012. It's not going to happen. You have to understand that's 2012. But in 2015, scientists in Chile spot it. Then in 2016, everybody got amnesia again. And here we are two years later, and we have to bring it up again because it, get this, if you go to the book of Job and go to chapter 38 in the book of Job, the word wormwood was all, before John wrote the book of Revelation, Job already knew something about um, what was going on in Orion. So these guys in Chile said that they found these, they spotted these two planets or huge something way out there, dwarf star, planet X, Nibiru, whatever you want to call it, planet number nine, whatever. And they said it was in the constellation of Orion. So if you go with me to the book of Job, verse chapter 38, verse 31, it says, Canest thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Canest thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? That's the whole constellational alignment. Or can thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Okay. So do you have the ability to do this, Job? Do you totally understand the constellations? Do you, can you loose the bands of Orion? Why would he say that? What's in Orion? Could it be planet X? Could that have been what he's talking about? Well, we don't know. Okay, we don't know. But Wormwood is brought up in other parts of the Bible, in the Old Testament. And uh, so we can see something's going on. I just want to share this with you. I think it's important that an asteroid this big that could have created a catastrophic event. We didn't even see it. Or if we did, they just didn't tell us. We didn't see it according to NASA. And when we did see it, we didn't tell you about it for a month. And we waited till Jerusalem's hair was on fire to actually then sneak it in uh, a small report that got picked up only by uh, very few no, no mainstream, mainstream people wanted, you know, even they just, uh, NASA just wanted to let it out and then walk away, but we're going to let you know about it. So that's what's going on. And meanwhile, while this is going on, um, the Pope wants to change the Lord's prayer. What? 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 Are you serious? Are you serious? Pope Francis? Are you serious? Vatican? Uh, let me just tell you what he, what's going on here. The Pope uh, wants to uh, he wants to change the Lord's prayer. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to understand this one. Now, the Pope did kiss the Quran and said it was the Holy Quran. So uh, maybe there's confusion which book he's reading. But uh, Pope Francis says the wording that's in the English translation of the Lord's Prayer is, needs to be changed. Uh, Pope Francis has called for the English wording of the Lord's Prayer to be changed because he said it implies that God is inducing temptation. Uh, the prayer says, where it says, you know, our Father which art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, the Pope says that the, the phrase, lead us not into temptation, might, it says, looks like God is leading us into temptation. He would like to change the words of the Lord's Prayer. I think everybody that prays this prayer knows that God's not the one leading us into temptation. Uh, with all due respect to the Pope, I, I think that Everyone knows that what it means is that we don't want, we're praying to the Lord. First of all, our Father. Another, uh, then he, he was interviewed again and said, maybe we should change the word our Father to just address heaven. Okay, Jesus said, let me, they asked Jesus about praying. Jesus said, let me teach you how to pray. You pray like this, our Father, okay, which art in heaven. So we don't need to change our Father, okay, uh, and I think most of us understand that when it says, lead us not into temptation, we're not saying that God is leading us into temptation. We're saying, we're asking God to help us that we not be led or that we not follow the temptations that are already out there. Guys, this is elementary. I mean, this is so elementary. This is Bible. This is Sunday school 101. We don't need to change the, the, the Lord's prayer. I mean, it's, it's just not that difficult. And then he's kissing the Holy Quran. That's what he called it, the Holy Quran. I'm not calling it the Holy Quran, but I'm saying he kissed the Quran, called it the Holy Quran. I mean, are you serious? Uh, I mean, we just, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Um, but anyway, the Pope has got to have something to discuss because Jerusalem's on fire and he's mad. Jerusalem's on fire. Uh, it, it's up, and, and, but before we talk about that, it's snowing in Houston, Texas. What? What? It is snowing in Houston, Texas in December. And, um, it, uh, it's just kind of strange, but, uh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Way down in Houston town, you know, you see the snow is falling and the lights are glowing in deep down in Houston, Texas snow. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me that this is going on down in Houston, Texas, but uh, it also snowed in San Antonio and I don't know. I mean, it's just, this is insane. Are you serious? Brock, are these actual pictures from Houston, Texas? Are you serious? I mean, what in the world? What is going on? Uh, but wait a minute. There's more. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit crazy out there. Um, we also understand that, uh, well, in California, the wildfires are out of control, burning and blazing. Now it's not just the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles, but it's San Diego as well as this is an inferno. It's California up in flames, California wildfire out of control. And this is December. And so the, the Santa Ana winds are blowing the, uh, the fire and the, and the raging flames, uh, torching hundreds of homes destroying mass amounts of uh, land, thousands of acres, 200,000 citizens have to flee for their lives. 
There's been quite a few horses that have been burned to death in the incredible heat in horse ranches. Uh, matter of fact, I'm, we're understanding now where my son, Paul Jr., where Paul Andrew uh, Begley, where he used to live over there uh, near uh, in Camp Pendleton, the you know, Oceanside, I guess they are being threatened by this incredible wildfires. Los Angeles, California is being threatened. Look at this. This is an inferno. I mean, this is the, the Hollywood hills have become hellfire in California. And now it's out of control. It's only 10% contained, the Thomas fire is, which is the biggest one. And there's several others. There's, now there's six fires burning. There's over 1,500 firefighters. They're exhausted. Jerry Brown, the governor, don't know what to do. Uh, the president of the United States has declared California, uh, Ventura County, California, a state of emergency. And, and now San Diego County is up in flames. There's been uh, homes burning to the ground, mansions being consumed, uh, buildings uh, being completely torched. Uh, it, the fire flames shut down I-405 a couple nights ago from the from Highway 10 to the Highway 101. Uh, the flames have jumped four-lane highways. Can you imagine? The Santa Ana winds have been blowing at almost hurricane strength, fanning the flames and the dry. And, and it was Al-Qaeda who said, told the radical jihadi sleeper cells in America, go ahead and set the hills on fire. They put that, look at this, they put that in their magazines the, in the dark web and also in their printed magazines that they send to the different mosques. You know, you heard me right. Al Qaeda sends their magazine to certain mosques across the world, and in the magazine they they were calling on jihadi sleeper cells in America to set the hills on fire. So, did they do it? I don't know, but nobody knows the cause of the fires. Did they do it? Good chance that it was them. It's a very good possibility. I mean, you can't deny it. Um, the fires are out of control. I want to welcome all 1,300 of you that have joined us live over at uh, YouTube Live and many hundreds of you that are with us at publiclyprophecy.com and new live stream and Roku satellite television and Periscope, which the Periscope live feed will also then be uploaded on Twitter. And also let me say that we want to say uh, hi to everybody that's watching out there uh, and listening on the radio line right now. There are 56 people listening on the new radio line. That number to dial if you want to listen live is 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. 472-5791. The access code is 322-656-POUND. That's 322-656-POUND. All right. So people are watching, listening, and viewing uh, this broadcast all over the world. We want to welcome all of you. California up in smoke. And you know, the Bible told us in the book of Joel that we would see blood and fire and vapor of smoke and the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Get a cup of coffee or get the tea.com or do something, but calm down everybody out there. You know, tonight, uh, this, this afternoon, we've got so many people and so many things to pray about. Prayer requests have been coming in from everywhere with some very serious things. And so we are going to be praying at the end of the broadcast and we're going to be blessing all of the tithe and offerings that come in through the week. Uh, those of you who have maybe already given or maybe those of you who are giving today, we are going to pray a special prayer. And we're going to also in that prayer, we're going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says, and ye shall prosper if you pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Well, this today, Friday prayers have just ended in Jerusalem and uh, it's total chaos. One Palestinian has been shot dead. 60 people have been wounded. That was a report from two hours ago. 
14 rockets have been fired out of Gaza into Israel. Look at that. That's the Temple Mount just after Friday prayers. When Friday prayers ended, and they, they go up there, 8,000 men go up on the Temple Mount to pray at the al Ask Mosque. When they came out of Friday prayers, they were waving the Palestinian banner, and they started chanting, Jerusalem is ours. Jerusalem is ours. Matter of fact, I think I have some footage to show you. Uh, let me find it first before I uh, go there. But um, they were chanting... They were literally, it was out of control. Let me, uh, Brock, you got plain pictures. Use those for a minute. A Palestinian man was shot as uh, Israeli soldiers during the clashes across the West Bank and in Gaza, uh, as well as in Jerusalem. Burning tires sent thick smoke, columns of black smoke into the sky as the Palestinians threw stones while forces responded with tear gas and rubber bullets. At least 60 people have been wounded by live fire. One is dead. And uh, as we enter the third day of what is supposed to be three days of rage, hundreds of more Israeli police officers have been deployed into Jerusalem's old city. The man that was killed was 30 years old. His name, Mohammed Al-Marsi, who, uh, and you can see, look at this. This is unbelievable, folks. It's out of control, folks. It is out of control. Uh, he was struck by a live fire uh, there in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. The disturbances came after Palestinian groups called for widespread demonstrations in a day of rage. So they come out of Friday prayers. You saw how the, the intensity. They're chanting, Jerusalem is ours. Jerusalem is ours. And then here we go with the rock throwing, the slingshots, the uh, petroleum uh, bombs, uh, the, the, the chaos, the fighting, the knives, uh, the, it's just insanity, uh, what's taking place in the streets of Jerusalem tonight, tonight. It's nightfall now. The Sabbath has begun, but I tell you, it's going to be tough. To, it's not going to be a quiet Sabbath. I can see that. They've kind of waited for the Sabbath day to erupt. They did their Friday prayers and not a lot went on the last couple of days. They did their Friday prayers. And then the next thing you know, man, this thing got real ugly, real fast. Matter of fact, uh, Jerusalem is recognition, uh, there of Donald Trump calling Jerusalem, of course, the capital of Israel, making that declaration. That's right. They're burning the U S flag. They're burning the Israeli flags. Uh, they are, it's, it's getting uglier by the minute. And, uh, I think we all realize that, uh, this is the kind of thing that, um, you know, you don't want to see it. Uh, you pray that it never happens, but, uh, it is taking place as we speak. I'm going to, uh, give me just a moment. I'm having a little difficulty here, uh, because I thought I had it and I don't, and I don't what I wanted to show you, uh, some of the, uh, what's taking place in Jerusalem right now, but it has definitely become a cup of trembling. It's definitely become a cup of trembling. It is a, a chaotic situation. Um, and I'm just trying to find the right footage. I had it. So give me a moment here to uh, locate. This footage is actually from Rupley. Okay. And... Uh, This looks like in a field taking place right here. This looks like a field in Jerusalem. I see, uh, we got a cameraman there. I see Israeli soldiers, it looks like. They may be arresting these guys, I don't know. There was a, not sure what's going on there. They were wanting to throw So I'm not sure what's taking place. The skirmish may be about over there. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll go back a little bit. This looks like this was kind of what was happening here. Let's see. 
So this was just a few minutes. I would say because it's dark there now. This was probably a couple of hours ago. I can look and see. Never a good thing when this stuff goes on. And, uh, Brock, I'm going to try to find some more footage here. Okay. Uh, I think I might find some more over here. There, there was some rioting going on at the Damascus Gate. And, uh, they got out of control a little bit. But again, this is footage that has earlier today. It's gotten a lot worse since some of this footage was posted on the internet. Um... This doesn't look too bad. Probably just some po daytime. It looks like some of the older folks, some of the elderly people are out protesting. But it, the, the violence has really broke out since the nightfall. Okay? And uh, it's gotten really ugly there. We're just going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because I, I tell you, as you can see, some of the pictures Brock is capturing here. We just uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This isn't what we want to see happen. 14 rockets. You can see them on top of the Temple Mount there. They're very angry. They're very upset. Fourteen rockets have been fired um, and uh, from Gaza into Israel. I'm sure that that won't be the end of it. I'm sure it's going to continue. And uh, Mike Pence is supposed to go to Israel uh, to meet with the Palestinian leaders. Not sure how well that's going to go over. Uh, some of the Palestinians are saying, don't come, you're not welcome. But uh, the trip is still scheduled. Trump is going to send him in there and uh, hope that he can bring some kind of calm. You know, I think what, the, what Trump's trying to say is, look, this, this is a done deal. I'm just fulfilling what was, was agreed to in 1995. Okay, so that's the man, Mike Pence. Send him over there, see if he can bring calm to the Holy Land. Uh, I wouldn't want to be uh, trying to pull that one off, but uh, he's the right guy to send because he actually does have a calm demeanor and, and an ability to hopefully communicate with the folks that are there. Um, but that guy right there, that's President Maud Abbas, and uh, he is willing still to meet with Mike Pence and to talk about what's going on. But certainly it's a dangerous situation that's developed in Jerusalem. It's a very citrus situation. It's very dangerous, but it is expected. I am not at all. I'm actually thinking it's not been as bad as I really thought it would be. Uh, I really don't. You know, I was in Jerusalem in 2015 during what they call the Knife Intifada. I wasn't with a tour or nothing. I went by myself. Actually, I took a cameraman with me from La Cie Broadcasting. And for a week, we went around to different locations, and we were filming for television. We had several interviews. I interviewed Jerusalem Jane while I was there. I interviewed Samantov while I was there in the streets of Jerusalem. I uh, interviewed Avi Lipkin, um, uh, just several different people. But that week, uh, violence broke out, and there was, a, there was stabbings going on in different locations around the city of Jerusalem, so I was kind of dodging and weaving trying to go areas where it was you know a little safer i did go to the uh on friday morning i made the mistake and we went early in the morning to the the garden tomb and next to the garden tomb is a mosque and on friday mornings that's when they all go there to pray and uh it was during the what's called the knife intifada so people had been getting killed every day but i mean it's not like it's dangerous because they're, they're fighting with each other in areas that they pretty well know they want to fight in. But I got to the garden tomb, and then that's when they told me, they said, you know, you might want to come back tomorrow. They're going to get out of prayer in a, in a few minutes, and when they do, you know, they may not be in a good mood, okay? And so there was, uh, but there was a lot of Israeli police officers in the streets already blocking it off, preparing in case there'd be any trouble. So that was during a time uh, in October of 2015. It's been very, actually been pretty peaceful in Jerusalem, uh, for the last two years. Now, Trump has made this 
now a cup of trembling. Jerusalem erupts with these riots. It has become a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone for all people. As we read that scripture to start today's program, the violence will continue through the night. I believe it will continue tomorrow on the Sabbath. It will push on into Sunday. Uh, and then I think we're going to start to see it quiet down to some degree. I, I really don't, either that or the Palestinians just got caught off guard and weren't prepared to gear up for a, uh, a big deal. I think that this, what Trump's trying to say, this is what the Bible says, and this is who the capital is. It is Israel's. This is off the table now. But if you want to still put together a peace agreement, it can still be done between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We're just, Jerusalem's off the table. Jerusalem believe, belongs to Israel. That's off the table. But if you want to negotiate a deal where the Jews give a little bit of East Jerusalem to the Palestinians, then sit down and work it out. But for right now, we're moving our, we're going to build a new embassy in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And that's just it. And guess what, folks? That's what the Bible said it would be in the book of Psalms, chapter 48. And the, it, this has come to pass. It has been declared by the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And if Hillary Clinton had won the election, this would not have happened, which would have which would have really been a strange situation because it's year 70 and this is the year it should have happened. But if she won, it wouldn't have happened. So now you might help you understand why she didn't win because it was already prophesied that the, the, the president basically who would be here now would do this. I mean, this is the cup of trembling. This is the burdensome stone. And everybody that comes against Israel will be broken into pieces. So you can make a decision right now which side you want to be on. And the Lord said, and uh, it will be a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone for all people or a stumbling block for many people. And if you're anti-Semitic, it's not going to go over for you. But that's not a good thing. What the Bible says is saying, don't be anti-Semitic. This is the city of the great king. This is the city of our God. It's Psalms 48. And so we're in this cup of trembling. We're in this burdensome stone. This Jerusalem is a cup of trembling, just like the Bible said it would be. And Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem compassed about by many armies, know that those things that are written shall come to pass. For these are the days of vengeance. All right, so we're, this is the time. Look at who's surrounding Jerusalem. Iran, Russia, Syria, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, Hamas in Gaza, the Muslim Brotherhood over in the Sinai of Egypt, the Iranians calling for Israel's annihilation. It's radical Islam surrounding Israel just like the Bible said it would. And now the flames, the smoke, the rocks are being thrown, the tear gas, the bullets are starting to ricochet. We understand now what's happening. It's the cup of trembling. It is the burdensome stone for all people. And I think that when you look at it from a biblical perspective, you can understand and appreciate the fact that you're living in the last days, this will quiet down though. The peace of Jerusalem will come. Okay. It will come. Shalom, shalom. Especially when the Prince of Peace comes. All right. When Yeshua returns and he will bring, no doubt about it, he will bring in a new era. The question is, will you be ready when he comes or will you be on the outside looking in? You don't want to be left behind. I've got a ton to talk about. We got the monster of the swamp to reveal to you in just a moment. Uh, unbelievable information. Bart Begley called me on the phone and said, Dad, 
we might have identified the monster of the swamp. So when we come back in just a moment, we're going to talk about that and the AI God. That's right. Artificial intelligence. The AI God. I talked about it last night. Going to talk about it again. A, a, a former executive of Google and of Uber is coming, has, has, has pulling, setting down and he's designing an artificial intelligence image a God that will be able to speak in every language of the world, be able to understand in every language in the world, be able to gather the information of the world and can make decisions and rationalize and decide and analyze. And they're going to create a new religion called the way of truth, a better way to understand the Godhead an AI God, artificial intelligence. Are you serious? We've lost our mind. I'll be right back in just a moment. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now. I have a book called Mark of the Beast, RFID, a powerful illustration of the last days. It is filled with biblical prophecy, current world events, and an end time apocalyptic scenario. This novel will keep you on the edge of your seat. 18 things I wrote has come to pass, including that Pope Benedict would resign. Get a copy of it right now. It's amazing. Mark of the Beast at my website. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about his return. Get it now at my website. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. Hey, I. Are you serious? Are you serious, folks? We're going to talk about this artificial intelligence in just a moment. But first, we've got, the, we've got to deal with the, uh, the swamp monster. The swamp monster, uh, Bart Begley over at the Crusader Journal. 
just came out with an article a few minutes ago. Called me on the phone just before I went on the air. Jerusalem, we're going to keep a close eye on Jerusalem. And as we're, t- of course, we're going to pray for the offerings that come in all week long, as we always do. And if you're given an offering today, included in that, put, if you want to, put a prayer request right in there as you're giving today. We're going to pray for all the offerings and tithe offerings, donations, and people even, everybody planted a seed in the middle of their need, everyone. And if you want to give, if you haven't given this week, if this is your moment, or if you have and you want to give again because you want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I really, you know, it's up in smoke right now. We could say, well, Trump caused it. No, no, Trump didn't cause it. Trump fulfilled a biblical prophecy. The reaction is typical. This is the reaction you generally get from the Palestinians on anything and everything. Okay. Um, and so this was predictable. I actually don't think it's been as bad as it that I expected unless they've been holding back for this weekend. And let's pray that's not what it is. So I need you to join with me a little bit later in the broadcast when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But let me tell you what's going on. We got to go to the swamp. What? The swamp monster may have been identified as the judge who's been presiding over the Michael Flynn criminal case has just recused himself. Oh, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Um, the reports are the United States district court for the district of Columbia, uh, judge presiding over the criminal case for president Donald Trump's former national security advisor. This guy, uh, has, uh, his name is judge Rudolph Contreras, Rudolph Contreras, um, He's presiding over the criminal case for President Donald Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. He has just recused himself handling the case, but he won't tell nobody why. What do you mean you won't say why? You know, if you recuse yourself, it's because you you probably have a conflict of interest or there's something about you, what you've done or somebody you know or maybe you've had contact with, or maybe statements you've made about Donald Trump or Michael Flynn or, or somebody. Well, if you knew you had already been involved with people involved in the case, you would have never heard the case in the first place. You would have never allowed for the indictment of Michael Flynn. You would have recused yourself before Flynn was ever indicted. You don't stick around and indict the guy and get him to plead guilty to a real weak line to the FBI kind of thing, which is so bogus. And then you recuse yourself. But why are you going? What? Why? why? And then you don't tell us why? What? Well, this might be, he might be the swamp monster. And Mueller might be the swamp king. Um, uh, but anyway, according to the court filings, U S district court judge Rudolph Contreras, who presides over the December 1st hearing where Michael Flynn went in and pled guilty to lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russia will no longer handle the case. He's, he's done. He got the job done. Get Flynn indicted, get him to, uh, plead guilty. And then now you can go away. All right, because if they dig into your past and figure out just what side you are really on, they'll figure out you're the swamp monster. What? Folks, we got people crawling all over this now to find out what the story is with this dude. Uh, uh, But the court spokeswoman, Lisa Kleem, did not say why Judge Contreras was recused and added that the case was randomly reassigned. I'm not buying. Are you believing that? This is the president of the United States National Security Advisor. Just randomly, we're just going to reassign this case. Nobody believes that. It's because this thing stinks to high heaven. This is as filthy as it gets. You talk about trumped up charges. No pun intended there. But uh, you talk about the swamp. 
They don't, they know it's good. They know they don't have clean hands on this one. Look at everybody now. Everybody that Robert Mueller, his whole staff was involved in either Benghazi or they were involved in the in Clinton email server or they were involved in the fake dossier. The swamp, the swamp, 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 swamp music, swamp, 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 swamp music. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, folks. It's unbelievable. Uh, they're telling me to check the connection again here on the free conference call for some reason. Don't know what happened. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Don't know what happened, but we lost it for some reason over there. Give me one second, guys. I'll try to get it back. One second. I, I know. Is, it, is it because I'm talking about the swamp? Is it because I said this guy's the swamp monster? No, 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 no. I mean, what is going on here? Hang on, everybody at the direct line. We'll be back on in a moment. Uh, just one second. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Thank you. There are 44 participants. Well, in we, the we lost a few All of them there. Are muted. Sorry, guys, that uh, we lost some of you there temporarily. Uh, we had a disconnection. First time that's ever happened. So we apologize that that took place. Okay. But it did. All right. It did. Uh, anyway, so I don't know. You mean, why did the swamp, is this guy the swamp monster? Is he the swamp monster? Uh, why is he leaving now? We're not buying the story. And Reuters uh, could immediately, could, could not understand. They, they could not learn the reason. Uh, according to the attorney for Michael Flynn, they're even, even Michael Flynn's attorney is delighted. He doesn't want to comment. Flynn's sentencing will be overseen now by a U.S. District Court Judge Emmett Sullivan. Sullivan was appointed by the former Democrat President Bill Clinton. Oh, you got Hillary and Bill and the Swamp Monsters and Mueller. And they, the, Mueller was involved on the Uranus One deal. And then, of course, uh, Mueller's guys worked for him. Of course, the Clinton cartel, they got $145 million out of this. This is a cabal, folks. This is the new world order. This is the, this is the one world government. This is the slime, the sleaze, the slippery slope, the cesspool of sin, uh, called the swamp in Washington. And it's getting worse. Now, Flynn was the first member of Trump's administration to plead guilty to a crime uncovered by the special counsel, that guy. You just saw Robert Mueller. What? Is Mueller, I was thinking he was the swamp monster, but he's bigger than that. It looks like the, the, he had swamp monsters working for him. He may be something worse than the swamp monster. Uh, is he the swamp dragon? Is he the swamp beast? Is, uh, what is he? Uh, anyway, wide ranging probe into the Russian attempts to influence the 2016 U.S. election. Nobody, and, and yeah, there. So Mueller's running this collusion confusion campaign against Trump. Nothing there. Nothing to see here, as L.A. Marzulli would say. Move along. Nothing here. Nothing to see. Move on out of the swamp. See, there's there's no need. I mean, and um, you can see what else is going on here. The collusion confusion. Russia's denied meddling in the election. Trump has dismissed any suggestion of collusion. Flynn also agreed to cooperate with Mueller in the investigation. Um, a sentencing date has not yet been set. Now the judge has been, it has it, it, uh, recused himself. Uh, judge Contreras, I guarantee when we find out what this swamp monster has done, when we find out why he had to get himself out of the way, it's because if he sentenced Michael Flynn, and then we found out how he was involved in this whole scheme of collusion, confusion with the fake dossier, the Hillary Clinton email scandal. If he, then we would, then people would be screaming, what in the world is going on? The corruption in the swamp. So they've decided to get him out of it, but they left him in there long enough, just long enough. Now they're going to push him along with the James Comey's gone. He also appointed a foreign intelligence surveillance court. Back in May of 2016, um, a term lasting till 2026. So this guy is also on the FISA court, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. This guy's on the FISA court. 
Obama put him there and he'll be on the FISA court until the year 2023. Can we hope that we're just raptured before then? Can we just hope that we're gone? I don't want to be left behind if the swamp monster is still sitting on a FISA court. Guys, that's the court that's off the books. Do you really want to know what goes before that court? Do you want to? Understand? Why was this guy the one? Anyway, the court issued warrants that allowed Justice Department officials to wiretap individuals. That's the FISA court. That's so I guarantee you that the swamp monster, Rudolph Contreras, that he probably ordered the wiretapping of Michael Flynn and Donald Trump Jr. and Donald Trump in the Trump Tower. He worked for the FISA court that, remember when Trump said, Obama's wiretapping me, and everybody said, he's not wiretapping you. Yes, they were. Now we found out, yes, they were. Well, how did it happen? The FISA court approved it. Well, who's on the FISA court? Well, one of the judges is this guy, the Swamp Monster. What? It's getting uglier there. You got the Harvey Weinstein. Look at Hollywood. Look at the sleaze. Look at the Harvey Wood. Oh, look at the Harvey. And it keeps going on. The swamp just gets more slimier and sleazier and slippery and slope. And it's a cesspool of sin, the sludge and the sewage and, and, the, and the swamp. And it just, and are you serious? And it just keeps going on. But wait, there's more because a hearing because, guys, remember the FISA court, the court issued warrants for spying. Well, the most recent controversy related to the FISA warrants was when Peter Storick, this is Robert Mueller's right hand man, Robert Peter Storick, a senior FBI agent who just got fired for tweeting and sending emails, anti Trump emails, while yet he's the one that investigated the tarmac with Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton and said, nothing to see here, everybody move along. He's the same guy that re was involved in the bringing forth the fake Russian dossier. He's the same guy involved in the uh, investigation of the Hillary missing email mails and the, and the Hillary uh, uh, server scandal when he said, nothing here, move along. He's the same guy involved in the Russian collusion investigation. Now we're finding out that it was the same guy, the same guy. Oh my Lord. How many things is this guy involved in? He's like, he's like some kind of, um, uh, secret hitman, uh, not literally, but, uh, uh, who was removed from the Russian investigation for exchanging text messages with a colleague that expressed the anti Trump views. At the hearing Thursday at the House Judiciary Care Committee, Republican lawmaker Jim Jordan passed FBI Director Christopher Wray on whether a former British spy dossier of allegations of Russian financial and personal links to Trump's campaign and associates was used by Stork, Peter Stork, um, to obtain the FISA warrant to put the surveillance on Trump's transition team and the Trump Tower. Judge Sullivan previously served on the Superior Court of the District of Columbia and District of Columbia Court of Appeals under appointments by Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, respectively. Was this guy involved? Michael Flynn didn't have a chance. They had the deck stacked against the guy. And he didn't commit a crime. The only crimes that, that he may have committed was before he was ever chosen to work for Donald Trump when he was a foreign agent. But guess what? Guess who else was a foreign agent and never registered as a foreign agent? The Clintons. Bill Clinton has traveled the world setting up deals. He's not registered as a foreign agent. Neither was Hillary Clinton. Hillary was the Secretary of State. She was setting up deals on your dime. Then after she got out of the Secretary of State, the four years before she ran for president, she was traveling the world, still representing America as a foreign agent. She never filed to be a foreign agent, but she don't have to because there's a different set of rules in the swamp for the Clintons and the Clinton regime and the swamp monsters and the swamp gators and the swamp snakes and the swamp sleaze and the cesspool. It is nothing more, guys, than a septic tank of, of political uh, chaos 
in Washington. And I think the more we continue to see the, the, the swamp drain, the more they drain the swamp, the slimier and sleazier and cesspool of sin. It's the abominations. It's going to blow your mind. We're just getting started with this. Look at the, the now Al Frankenstein is gone and uh, John Conyers is gone and probably this, the now a, a Republican senator. Oh, these guys are getting off the boat. I mean, get these. They're, they're jumping off ship. They're, and then, of course, Donna Berzier, she's, she's shoving Hillary off the, 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 the boat and everybody's po poking each other in the eye. And it's unbelievable what's going on. It's going to get worse, folks. I need you to pray because there will be bodies starting to pile up. And when it happens, you'll say, Pastor Begley told us. What I'm trying to tell you is soon bodies will start showing up. And what I mean by that is People involved in this entire uh, cesspool of sleaze over this entire fake Russian dossier and Russian collusion confusion and Hillary Clinton email and Benghazi. We just got a report yesterday that the FBI assistant director told the FBI agents to not declare Benghazi a act, an act of terror. It was not a terror attack. You're telling me that 500 Muslim jihadis burning down the U.S. consulate, killing four diplomats, including the U.S. ambassador, raping him and dragging his body through the streets, that was not terrorism? People are dying. People are dying right now. These are low level, very low level, no names, nobody knows. There are already bodies are piling up all over Washington because of the, the pet, pizza gate, sex trade trafficking, sexual harassment, Russian fake dossier, Russian collusion confusion, the Hillary email scam. I mean, the Hillary thing, I mean, Seth Rich, I mean, I mean, we could go on forever. The guys that installed the, the servers in Hillary's mansion in New York, they're both dead. I mean, the, the little people that nobody knows, they're already piling up. But soon you're going to hear of big names or people that you've heard of. Soon their bodies are going to start to be floating in the swamp. And you're going to understand that this beast that has been operating inside the beltway is now burping in the reality of the scandals, the abominations. And so you need to pray for the President of the United States and for his family and Vice President's family and everybody involved in this nation that's trying to do the right thing because I tell you, look, we've already got congressmen being shot. You know, Republican congressman, a wonderful God-fearing man, a Christian man, Steve Scalise, man, he was targeted to be murdered on the ball field this summer. And in the back pocket of the shooter was the name of six congressmen, all Republicans, all Christians that he planned on murdering. And oh, by the way, Ron Paul, we don't know exactly why he got attacked on the back of his John Deere tractor the other day in the yard. But there's, I mean, he got six ribs broke. We're still not sure what that story's about, but something don't feel right about that. I don't know. But there's a lot going on right now, folks. It's getting worse and worse. But wait, maybe... A new AI God could solve all the problems. Maybe artificial intelligence. That's probably what they're thinking. They, maybe they think we should just go ahead and get an AI God and let that God solve our problems. Uh, make an image to the beast and that it can both speak and cause as many as that worship the beast could be put to death. We talked about this last night. Let's talk about it again for you on the daytime broadcast. Former Google and Uber engineer is developing an AI God. That's right. Artificial intelligent God. The concept of the AI God may seem outlandish, but a former Google and Uber engineer is touting the ideal of a high tech deity as a way to improve society. Yes, solve the world's insuperable problems. 
Remember Malachi Martin, Dr. Malachi Martin? Remember his interview in 1997 with Art Bell on Coast to Coast? He was a 25-year exorcist for the Vatican who quit the Vatican because of the corruption, who had did over a thousand exorcisms in his life. He was interviewed. I've played, you can see it. I have a YouTube video for his entire interview with Art Bell in which he says the Antichrist will have the ability to solve uns, insuperable problems. Well, then they're going to make an image to the Antichrist, an image to this beast. And this image, well, let's read it. Keep your, uh, Brock, stay with me on this. This is, this is huge. This is huge what's going to happen. Just let me stay on this camera. That one there has got too big of a glare. Uh, look at Revelation 13. Here's what it says. The Antichrist, all right, they will make an image. Look at verse 15. And he had, uh, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Some kind of an image. Now, I thought it was a statue. Now I'm believing it's a robot, a lifelike robot. Look at these brand new sex robots that they're creating. They can talk, speak, answer questions, interact with humans, have sexual relation with humans. They've advanced it. They're using AI technology to advance that sick situation beyond my, I'm out, look, that's way out there in some abomination land. Well, check this out. They're going to, this is what I'm saying. This guy is making a new God. He said it's going to be done in the year of 2029. Look what the Bible says. It will have power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This thing will be able to make decisions. It's an AI. So look at this. So you think, think about how much we depend on Apple Siri, Amazon's Alexa. We ask the AI bot for directions to check on the weather for us, the traffic, to dim the lights in our house. Few of us know the complex engineering required to make this happen. We just trust it will work. But what we're finding out by the year 2029, computers will reach human levels of intelligence, according to one theory. In fact, Google already uses a bot called the Assistant that can answer just about any web search related inquiry. Could what we trust and rely on so heavily on a daily basis involve, be evolved into a religion or a cult? What? Uh, a well-known engineer who worked at Google and now, and then he worked at Uber. His name is Anthony Lewandowski. He has founded a new AI-based religion called Way of the Future. Now, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This guy has called, created a new AI religion called Way of the Future. And to worship and understand the Godhead for betterment of society. This is the beast, his image. This guy's building the beast, his image. And it'll be done in the year 2029. That's the same year that Apophis, that huge asteroid, is going to go ray whizzing by your head. <laughs> but wait, there's more. At least one expert suggested the ideal of an AI godhead might be overblown. However, recent coverage of artificial intelligence as a single unified power, that's a one world dis decision maker, is a predictable uh, unified power. Did you hear me? Recent coverage of an AI being a single upshot of a self uh, aggrandizing of the Sil Silicon Valley culture that believes it can summon a Godhead. They believe they can create God. They believe that this will be God. According to Arnold, the ideal of an artificial intelligent religion is re really more about 
the tech elite thinking they can summon a religion from the whole cloth. Similar to how the industry thinks one single app can be transcendent in society or life changing in some way. Instead, he argues that the cold and impractical nature of technology is not exactly a match made in heaven. The ideals of mourning loss, tragedy, social justice, larger responsibilities to a neighbor, which the world religious tradition have gradually developed resources to accommodate, to reflect upon, to offer rich reframings thereof, are largely dispensed with the AI as religion. God only knows if anyone will worship an AI. They will. If they're making sex robots, if they're making them to be companions, to have, carry conversations, besides having sexual relations, this is what they're doing. Then you know it's, they're going to worship AIs. You know they're going to go to that level. They're already going there, folks. Do you understand this is part of... No wonder they're taking a bite out of the apple. No wonder it's www. No wonder you... When, when they started the UPS system, uh, uh, to, I mean UPCs, the UPC barcode system that the computer, to, to, to make every label you have to type 666 and then the rest of the number. That's, that's the way it's done. No wonder the monster can that you guys energy drink you're drinking. No wonder it's the, the Hebrew letter of... Uh, if Just look at a monster can. That's three. Those are three... Those are the, the letter, that's the number 666 in the Hebrew language is what I'm trying to say. No wonder it is. Look, everything is being pulled together. They're, we're living in, and they even call it monster drink, okay? The beast, the monster, 666. It's on the can. That's the Hebrew number, 666. It's not a claw mark. It's the exact Hebrew number for 666. No, you're, you're walking right into the mark of the beast. You're literally, literally walking. The cup of trembling's burning in Jerusalem right now. The zombie apocalypse has been turned loose upon the world. The Hosea prophecy, dead birds, dead fish, dead cows dying every day everywhere. Lightning strikes killing more this year than ever. Asteroids whizzing by our head. Nobody even telling us they did. They say they didn't see it. Kim Jong-un on the brink of pushing the... He said yesterday, Kim Jong-un said yesterday, war is unavoidable. No other way around it. There will be war. The United States having 230 aircraft and uh, three uh, battleships and the seventh fleet and 12 nuclear submarines and B-1B stealth bombers and B-2 bombers and flying all over the peninsula of Korea. Wars, rumors of wars. The Middle East is up in flames. You watch. The Shiites were getting ready to fight the Sunnis. Now, now Jerusalem is up in flames. It's all coming together. We're living in the last days. Now they want to worship an AI God. They are literally calling for the beast. They're soon going to beg for a one world leader. They're going to beg for the beast to come. They're going to beg for the Antichrist with his sidekick, the false prophet. They're going to want this statue with this intellectual capacity. It's the Illuminati. It is the New World Order. It is the Trilateral Commission. It is the Bilderberg Group. It is the Bohemian Grove. It is. It has secret societies, bloodletting, murdering, chaos, swamp, and the sin and the corruption and the new world order is being established. And my question to you is very simply this. Are you going to be left behind? Or will you be ready when the Lord comes? Because he's coming in an hour you think not. The Bible says to watch and pray for an hour you think not the son of man cometh. For he's coming like a thief. He said, behold, I come as a thief. All right. You want to have on the wedding garment. You don't want to be like the five foolish virgins and have no oil in your vessel. You want to be ready. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, Jesus said. If any man would hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him, him with me. He said, watch and pray, for an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. 
For as lightning goes from the east to the west, Jesus said, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 36, for no man knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels in heaven, not the Son of God, but the Father only. If the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Jesus is coming when you least expect it, so you need to be ready at all times. How do you get ready? You gotta be born again. You gotta be born again. You gotta be washed in the blood. You gotta be set free from the bondage of sin. It is time to get right with God. It is time to be born again. We're gonna get a song. We, uh, Mike Childers was here earlier today, put in a brand new chord for us. We're hoping this eliminates, uh, the static. It's a brand new cord, gold, gold wiring. It's, I think it's got gold wiring inside. It's got a, a good way to fasten it to where there's no looseness there. We're hoping that has solved that problem. Also, the, the music was a little high uh, a couple of nights ago. We think we've solved that as well. I'm just going to ask you a question. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be born again? If you'll just type, I want to be saved. I'll write your name down. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem in just a little bit. We're going to bless all the offerings that have come in. But more importantly right now is your soul. Your soul. The moderators are helping. If you'll just type, I want to be saved, we will pray in just a moment. Let's do it right now. I'd be a fool to pass it up. I might as well live This is your moment. This is your hour. Call on the name of the Lord. All my sins are in the past. I am forgiven. I found free. This is your hour. A driver has just rammed a car into people near the World Trade Center in Manhattan. We'll get more information on that in just a minute. Thank you, Billy Nitrain. Gene wants to be saved. There may be anti-Semitism attacks around the world. H2 Ogan wants to be saved over a Periscope. H2 Ogan. Praise God. At Periscope. You can do this. Puzz wants to be saved. New live stream. There's somebody watching. There's several of you not saved. Periscope. There's more of you want to be saved. Paul Begley Prophecy. Do you want to be set free? You too. It's time to give your life to Jesus Christ. You're sitting at the cup of trembling. You're watching the wildfires burn. The asteroids racing by. The fireballs in the sky. The AI. The bees. The end time. Are you ready? Gene wants to be saved. H2 Ogan wants to be saved. Putz wants to be saved. Baldwin wants to be saved. Praise God. We're flowing. You can live forevermore. I'm forgiven. All my sins are in the past. I am forgiven. I found freedom and H2 Ogan wants to be saved. What Jesus did for me, and I'm forgiven. Don't wait too late, folks. Yes, I am. Time is running out. There was 26 people I'm last forgiven. night that accepted Christ as their Savior. Don't wait too late. Don't wait too late. Um, all right, his real name is Paul. That's great. Thank you. Putz, his real name is Paul. That's wonderful. Gene wants to be saved. Gerald wants to be saved. God bless you, Gerald. Also, Diana wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Uh, also, H2 Ogan, a Periscope, wants to be saved. Paul wants to be saved. Baldwin wants to be saved. Gerald wants to be saved. Diana wants to be saved. What about you? We're going to play another song right now. What about you? It's time to lay all your sins at the foot of the cross. Lay them down. Lay them down. Come to Jesus. 
right now. Just type, I want to be saved. Right now, Arabs are reporting that Israeli aircrafts are entering the Gaza airspace in the past minutes, conducting intensive flyovers, following, of course, 14 rockets fired from Gaza into Israel. Also, another 4.2 earthquake has hit San Diego, plus the wildfires are burning in San Diego and in Los Angeles. Come on, folks, it's time to get saved. Fireballs exploding in the sky in New Jersey. Are you serious? Mint Man Bill wants to be saved. Praise God. I guess that's Mountain Man. Mountain Man Bill wants to be saved. Praise God. There's others. There's others. Break loose. We're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But first, we need to get you saved. And get the peace of God in your life. The peace of God in your life. M. Elker wants to be saved. Praise God. M. Elker. There's others. Wendy wants to be saved. God bless you, Wendy. They're coming, folks. Gregory is H. 2 Ogan's real name. Gregory Martin. Praise God. All those with and with all of you burdened and broken down All of your There's others There's others Come on don't don't wait too late Don't wait too late Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Also, Elena wants to be saved. Come lay them down. You Doc lay down. wants to be saved. Gene wants to be saved. Lay them down. It's time, folks. Lay them down. It is time. Don't be left behind. Don't wait too long. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. In San Diego, the firefighters fighting the raging inferno felt the 4.2 earthquake that hit there and followed by an aftershock, they say, of 3.8. So... I mean, we're living in a time, folks, that the Bible said would come. We're living in these last days, and we're not ready. Millions of people are not ready. I feel like we should play one more song. One more song. Right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 11 people. God bless you, Stephen and Margaret. Sad and alone. Want to be saved tonight? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get right with God, folks. Her son was dying. She watched as they drove the nails through him and pierced his side. When he said it is finished, she saw her son and he died. Oh, but I see the blood. Barbie wants to be saved. Praise God. The blood that was shed. And John wants to be saved. John Mitri, M I T R I. John Mitri. God bless you, John. Folks, don't wait too late. 
We're getting ready to pray. We're going to pray and you can be saved right here today. We're getting ready to pray. Don't wait too long. Sad and alone. See, I stand to cry. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yana wants to be saved. I see our Savior. Praise God. There's a delay in some of these networks. Some are coming in to the Lord. It's not too late for you. But if you die in your sin, Jesus said, where I'm at, you cannot come. Jimmy Anderson wants to be saved. Praise God. The Lord wants to set you free. The Lord wants to set you free. Whom the Son of Man makes free is free indeed. He wants to set you free. He wants to break the chains. Break, 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 break the chains. In the name of Jesus. This is the moment you own it. This is the hour. Call upon the name of the Lord. And you shall be saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help them, Lord. My Lord have mercy. Still holds all the power. It keeps you and me. For God's final hour. Frederick wants to be saved. Frederick Barth. We have right now 18 names that want to be saved. And we're going to pray with these folks. Just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life, to come into my soul, to come into my heart, to wash me in the precious blood of the Lamb, to cleanse me, Lord, of all unrighteousness. Take away the pain. Take away the shame, the sin. Make me a new creature. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm calling Upon the name of the Lord. Because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. That Yeshua is the Messiah. The Son of God the Savior of the world. I believe He ascended to heaven. And I believe Christ is returning soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, Born again, saved in Jesus' name, saved in the name of the Lord, saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you serious? 18. There's another one, Solar Will. 19. Welcome to the family. The stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. Mountains and the seas, he's in control of everything, all creatures great and small. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. Are you serious? He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed. He knows your pain. name. And your name the light is written day. down I know in glory. Just fine. He knows my name. Welcome to the family. I don't know what tomorrow may. 
may bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers To the questions of life But I know in who I have believed He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that Matt Raspberry also getting saved. Praise God. I can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. He knows my name. Yes, he does. 20 people saved today. The devil's nervous. He's nervous, Pervis. Come on. The king is coming. Welcome to the family. 20 people accepting Christ as their Savior. What a great day for this to happen. Very prophetic time. The cup of trembling is right now shaking in Jerusalem. And we just heard that Israeli airplanes flying over the Gaza Strip now. 14 rockets have already been fired out of Gaza into Israel. The city of Bethlehem is burning. Jerusalem rioting in the streets. One person has been shot dead. 60 have been wounded. There's smoke, there's fire, there's rocks flying, there's chaos, but it will settle down. Trust me, it will settle down. But uh, this was part of the prophecy. This was going to happen. And those that burden themselves with it will be broken into pieces. So you don't want to do that. Instead, do what the Bible said to do. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and you will prosper who pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so we're going to do that here today. If you are giving, we're going to bless all the offerings that have come in all week long. And today, right now, I'm going to take another seven minutes and we're going to pray for everyone that's, that's given this whole week. And those of you who are giving right now, and if you want to include in that offering that you're giving right now, if you feel led of the Lord to do this, put in there, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Folks, we're in the, we're coming up on the 70th anniversary of this nation's existence. We've already the 70th anniversary since it was declared a state okay declared a state and uh, we don't want you to uh we want you to understand that you're living in a prophetic time i did a video a couple of days ago about the 70 year uh prophecy of what trump just did it's a great video it's got i don't know 30 some thousand views probably it is really well i bring a lot of scripture into that i want you to watch that this weekend, if you get a chance, it will show you Jeremiah 29. It will show you uh, all the scriptures in the Bible. And today we've been in Zechariah 12 because we can see now that prophecy happening before our eyes. The cup of trembling, the burdensome stone for all people. You see, the Lord loves you. And so I want to say to you that just got saved, we want to encourage you. 
We want to encourage you to be baptized, to find a pastor, to find a church somewhere in the community where you live. All right. If you need help finding a church, a pastor, maybe a Messianic congregation, you can send an email to converts.2016 at gmail.com. That's converts.2016 at gmail.com. If, uh, and Dr. Rosa, she'll do her best to help you, all right? If you need a Bible, we'll send you one for free. You can send an email to zd one at hotmail.com. That's zd one at hotmail.com. Dot com. Or just go to my website at paulbeckleyprophecy.com, click on the prayer wall, leave your name and address and that, and uh, we'll get a Bible to you, okay, for free. If you need one, if you got one, get it out. If you can get one, go get it. If you need us to send you one, we will. It is free, and we'll pay the postage, and we'll get it to you because we want you to have the word of the Lord. Same thing, if you're sick, I'll anoint a prayer cloth, pray over it, and mail it to you to believe with you. Our faith will connect for your divine healing. It is free and we'll pay the postage. If there's somebody very ill that needs a blanket, we'll anoint it with oil, pray over it and send it to them. Uh, or a chemo cap, we'll anoint it with oil, pray over it and send it to them. And we can do this because our faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries, seriously, this amazing, amazing online church of believers who are giving right now. Many are going right now in the next four minutes. They're going to give because they want to bless the cyber revival. They want to continue to see 20 people saved, 20 today, 26 last night, 63 salvation Sunday night, 63. Matter of fact, if I could tell you about a correspondence that came after that. If I could tell you, and I will when, it, when the time comes, when I'm allowed to, of the amazing situation, the hearts that are changing, the lives that are changing. And there are some watching right now that are praying for, for the cyber revival, for the souls to be born into the kingdom. And they're praying for the peace in Israel. When I say I'm praying for peace, when I'm praying for the peace, I am praying for the peace of all of the Middle East for Israel, for the Jewish people, for the Palestinians. Remember, about 20% of all the Palestinian people are Christian. They are Christian. And I have met a lot of them in my trips to Israel. I was even, this last time I went, even privileged, Heidi and I were, to go into the home of a Palestinian family, Muslims, but Palestinian Muslims, who invited us into their home for tea. And, for, and to communicate and talk with one another. And uh, the man even told us that he is considering, uh, you know, accepting Yeshua as the Messiah. So, you know, God is moving in so many ways. Many of the Muslim people are coming to Jesus Christ. Many of them are being born again. Not all. Of course not. Some are very angry. Some are being rallied up by Hamas. The Palestinian Authority, okay, the chaos, the confusion, this is the cup of trembling. This is what the Bible said would happen, especially now that Jerusalem is now a nation, and now, I mean, Israel is a nation, and Jerusalem is now its capital. There you're looking at the pictures in the streets today, uh, okay? Every time there's a situation like this, biblically, there's a struggle. There's always been a struggle, but that doesn't mean it isn't the will of God. Jesus Christ was taken to the cross. There was chaos in Jerusalem that day as they made him carry his cross down the Villa de la Rosa. I've been to Pilate's hall where Pilate condemned him to death. From there to Golgotha, it's about a two mile walk up a hill. Basically going up, carrying a cross after being given 40 lashes, tied to a whipping post, ripped apart, bleeding, Beaten beyond recognition, eyes were swollen. The Bible said they pulled his beard out of his face. He had been beaten with a reed. He had a crown of thorns. His back was ripped apart with a cat of nine tails. He was a dying man trying to carry this cross through the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem. You have to understand there was chaos in the city. There was madness in the city. And yet what was happening? What was happening was the 800-year-old prophecy... 
given to us in Isaiah 53 that he had no beauty that we should desire him. He was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He was stricken and smitten of God. We hid our face from him. I'm telling you that Jerusalem today, the chaos you see, Trump hasn't done anything but declare it the capital. He fulfilled a biblical prophecy. He will be hated for it though. He will be trashed in the media. He will be bitified by your mainstream, lamestream, fake news. He will even be people in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will turn their backs on this man when all he did was fulfill the scripture in the Bible. That's all he did. He declared it the capital. He declared it the city of our God, the city of the great king. So what I'm telling you is when you see the smoke and you see the fire and you see the chaos, know this, that you're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And today we're doing it. Wow, I feel the Lord right now so strong. I feel the power of God so strong coming into this prayer. For you who got saved, you're getting saved today. A special day, a day of the cup of trembling, a day where Jerusalem is a cup of trembling and it becomes a cup of trembling many times. Okay. So this is just a one day deal, but you're definitely coming to the Lord at the right time. I can tell you the King of Kings is coming and you don't want to be left behind. I'm waiting one more minute. If you're giving today, please do it right now. If you have a prayer request, a praise report or something that you want to put in there, or if you want to write me, put my address up there, Brock. Put my address up there. Write me today. Put the uh, put it in the mail today. Maybe you got a prayer request, a praise report, or a prophetic dream or insight, something you want to share with me. Please do that. Write me. There's my address. If you want to put a check or money order in there as a gift to the work of the Lord, do that. But it's up to you. But I want you to be blessed today. And so many are giving today. Many have given this week. We're praying a powerful prayer of peace over Jerusalem. Peace. Peace. Let me just sing a little song here. It says, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. With fathomless billows of love. Oh, yes. May the peace, as the Shabbat has begun, as we have entered into the Sabbath in Jerusalem tonight, even though there's chaos in the streets, the Prince of Peace is coming. You want to be riding one of those white horses with him, or you want to be standing here changed, caught up, Whenever the Lord comes to get you, where, however he comes, if death finds you, so will the judgment, but however it is, but I'd love to be standing here. I'd love to be sitting right here in the salvation station. This would be awesome. Or maybe standing on the Mount of Olives with you this coming October, 2018, when the King comes to get the bride. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray the Shabbat, the Shalom. We pray the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray the peace upon all of our brothers and sisters. As Yeshua is our Messiah, the King of glory. He is the King of glory, Jesus of Nazareth. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the city of Jerusalem today. Thank you, God, for saving these souls today, Lord. Writing their names in the Lamb's book of life. Father, we pray for every person and every home that's gathered here today, every person in home, every family that gave this week into the, either their tithe or their offerings, or they've made a special donation today, maybe for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, would you just bless their homes, bless their families, bless their jobs, bless their employment, bless their careers, bless their businesses they own. Father, would you bless them and make them the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Bless them going in and going out. Make them, Lord, to know that you said that you, they could prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. David said, 
that I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Lord, you said if we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we shall prosper. Lord, you said that blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law we meditate day and night. We're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Our leaves will not wither. And we shall bear our fruit in our season. And whatever we put our hand to, it shall prosper. Lord, I read where Paul said, I would that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So Lord, we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are also Palestinian. We're praying for our brethren in Israel that are, uh, Lord, right now that peace would just come up over the city. That the calm, that the Prince of Peace, Lord, we understand the Bible. We know that it says that these days will come. But Lord, we trust and we trust you to bring us through this period. And we thank you, God, for the fulfillment of your scriptures. We pray for the President of the United States to be blessed. We know he will be. What he did has guaranteed it. Lord, we pray for the Vice President. Pray for both their families. We pray for our nation. We pray that the swamp, Lord, Washington to the sea, our capital, that is filled with such abominations and the cup of filthiness of abominations pouring out of it. Lord, we pray that there can be revival in the land. We thank you there are senators and congressmen, that there are people working in the government who do love the Lord. We thank you, God, there is prayer going on in the White House, that there's Bible studies going on, that pastors are gathering there, laying hands on the president and praying for him over the Oval Office. God, we thank you there's been a change in the atmosphere. And God, we just pray that you continue to move in a mighty way. Bless your people today, Lord. Bless them that have given to the work of the Lord. Bless each and every one that's here. If there be any sick, heal them, Lord. By your stripes, we're healed tonight. We thank you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we pray. And the people said, amen and amen. And shalom, shalom to all of you today. I pray as, whoops, as uh, I just lost my microphone here. Uh, I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will bless you. In everything you do. All right. And have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. And we will be back uh, probably later today. I may have some videos for you tonight. Certainly tomorrow we'll keep you up to speed on things going on. We're going to watch Jerusalem close. And I will report on it. I may even break in live at any time tonight or tomorrow. And of course we will be preaching live from the pulpit in Community Gospel Baptist Church this Sunday morning. We uh, and uh, also we'll be live uh, Sunday night as always on Sunday Night Live. So God bless all of you. Have a great, great weekend. Be blessed. All right. Be blessed in Jesus name. I'll see you next time. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger. Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know 
about his return. Get it now at my website. I have a book called Mark of the Beast, RFID, a powerful illustration of the last days. It is filled with biblical prophecy, current world events, and an end time apocalyptic scenario. This novel will keep you on the edge of your seat. 18 things I wrote has come to pass, including that Pope Benedict would resign. Get a copy of it right now. It's amazing. Mark of the Beast at my website. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name.